guys, Paul from Asher Phoenix. It is new comic book day for the week of March 3rd, and we're going to get started right now. This episode brought to you by the comic book store, 30 North Main Street, Glassburn, New Jersey, 08028. To come buy some comics or some D&D stuff, but mainly comics. Buy whatever you want. I mean, you could, but like comics. Hey guys, Tim from Capes and Scowls, and the comic book store, and Team Ashen, and 65 other places. You know, Paul, someone asked me, what are some of those 65 other places? Really? Yep. And I said, quiet, you smartass. So, hi, Nick. Um, got him. All right, so let's talk about the trades. Not a million trades today. Some good trades, though. We got Maestro. This is uh, the first mini series that came out. I like that they're doing a bunch of things with Maestro. And, you know, it's, it's Peter David, so all, automatically great. Uh, the Boys, Dear Becky. This was a lot of fun. I reviewed issue one. Uh, don't read it if you didn't watch or read The Boys. Definitely read all of the boys first. It takes place afterwards if you don't want that spoiled for you. Doctor Doom, Volume 2. This was pretty good. We've talked about this a little bit on here as well. I like Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom's like the best hero ever. Uh, Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, graphic novel adaptation from IDW. I feel like this is... Should have came out already. That might be old. I don't know what's up with that. That's weird that's there now. Hmm? Uh, Savage Avengers, Volume 3. Uh, just a strange book, and I love that about it. It's a strange kind of concept to throw some of these characters together, so why not? Uh, Transformers, 84. Boom, Secrets and Lies. You got some Dinobots on the back. I like the art in this. The art is really cool. Um, we have Superman Adventures, Lex Luthor, Man of Metropolis. I don't know if this collects old stuff or if this is new stuff, but I don't much care. Because if you never watched the Superman animated series, it's overshadowed by Batman and fair enough, but this is awesome. So I'm pretty sure I would love this. And finally, we got Batman and the Outsiders, The Demon's Fire. This is volume three. You got some Ra's al Ghul action in this one. So if you're all about it, get it. First up, we have Infinite Frontier, issue number zero. This takes place after uh, Death Metal, Metal, whatever whatever that was, and then Future State, this is basically setting up what is going to be the next big thing. And of course, uh, we all have uh, big thing fatigue. Like, it, it's... <sighs> DC's getting a little rough with this kind of stuff. I mean, the art was fantastic. This literally does set up literally the entire DC universe. So it's a big read. It's a little thick, um, but the art is good. It's basically going through Diana before she ascends um to uh kind of a different plane uh her just kind of seeing what um what might be wrong if there is a reason for her to leave all that kind of stuff um and it literally touches on everything in the dc universe so um if you're looking for that if you're looking for basically what the setup is this is definitely the book um but if you're not i mean it's not a it's not a infinitely necessary book um but it's not bad it was a good read so, definitely grab it. I'd like to say that all three of my books, again, I enjoyed this week, so I guess Pick of the Week didn't matter as much. They're all good, so please read them. But I'm going to start with Sensational Wonder Woman, issue one. Uh, this is part of that, what was it, Infinite something or other? I don't know. I don't know, DC, you confound me. But it is written by Stephanie Phillips, and I love me, Stephanie Phillips. She is the one who wrote Tarna that I raved about. Uh... This book is cool, and the writing and art go together very well. It is Wonder Woman in like a 1950s kind of setting, and you realize very quickly something is wrong, but they do very cool parallels between the Wonder Woman you know and like a 1950s housewife, and uh, pretty awesome stuff. She realizes something is wrong, and you realize she is not in her proper world. Yes, my watch beep. Professional. <laughs> She is not in her proper world, and it's once you figure out where she is and how she has to get out of it, it's pretty cool. I won't spoil it for you, but the uh, visuals of uh, certain powers going off is really cool, and uh, it's a good marriage of the art and the writing, which is paramount, I say. Uh, but yeah, I will check out more of this. I love Stephanie Phillips. I'm hooked. Tarno has me hooked, so now and I love Wonder Woman, so why not? Next up, we have Demon Days X-Men, issue number one. Um, this could just very well just be Demon Days. There's really not a ton here that um, 
borders on X-Men. However, this is uh, a new universe set in uh, feudal Japan. Um, it really, it, it's it's a very interesting story. If you've read anything uh, such as Wayward, uh, which is another great series that we, that we reviewed a couple of years ago, uh, this is Zach Davidson. He was responsible for a lot of the lore um, in the Japanese culture, and this has that very uh, much feel, same feel to it. Um, in in that it's not just Japan as the setting; it's more lived in and more feels the same. Uh, you do have some of your um, your notes of characters that you do recognize to kind of move the story along, but they're not really the same characters. Um, but this is a girl who looks like Psylocke who may not be Psylocke, um, basically trying to broker a treaty between uh, the humans and the Onis while trying to expel a sneak demon who looks very, very much like Venom. And um, it was a good read. It was really, it's really interesting. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing more of this series. Um, I think it could go on by itself. It doesn't necessarily need to be hooked to a, an existing title. Um, I think in this day and age with all of our indie comics and everything, there's no particular reason to uh, package it this way. I think it could live on its own. Um, I think maybe Marvel's just a little worried that it wouldn't. Um, but it was a good story. Definitely pick it up. Again, all my books were awesome. I think a lot of people will have this as their pick of the week, but I didn't pick it, and we'll get there. But it's so incredibly close. <laughs> Berserker, number one. This is the Keanu Reeves book with Matt Kent. I love Matt Kent. Super nice guy. I've interviewed him. He's a sweetheart. Uh, Keanu, I assume, is a sweetheart. And this book is incredibly over-the-top violent. Uh, it has that John Wick feel. I feel like there's a Matrix callback in here. It is about a, a man, a soldier, that just, is, it seems like, cannot die. And you get hints that he may have been around for a long time. And... If such a man existed and was a soldier, what would the government do with him? Uh, I don't want to give away too much more than that. It is gruesome, though. The violence in this book is... I haven't seen a book this violent in a long time. This is like The Boys, if The Boys was turned all the way up, the whole issue. And I guess that's a good thing. I mean, the art's awesome. Ron Garney uh, does a great job. And, uh, man, this is, a, this is really an interesting book to read. If you're squeamish, do not read this. If you don't like violence, if you can only deal with a little bit of violence, this isn't for you. But for everybody else, yeah, violence. So uh, check out Berserker. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing stuff. Just soldier violence. I can't tell you much more without giving away the hook. I loved it. My pick of the week is Noctera, issue number one. Man, this, this book is beautiful. Uh, Tony Daniel art, uh, Scott Snyder writing this this world ta this takes place 13 years in the future when the world is completely in darkness and you have val is a fairy person it's basically a ferryman that uh take people in between the two towns or the the several towns and outposts that are still lit uh anything that stays in the darkness for too long begins to mutate and become a shade uh, and it becomes the the basic big bads of this world and it's such a good story to read the art is spectacular the writing is great and what i love about uh this book is like what i like about any dc or any image book that i read uh where it completely sets up what is the, what the world is it gives you exactly what the main characters um motivations are and sets the world up for your big bad and all that kind of stuff. This is such a good book. Um, and it's a lot of fun to read and it's violent. It's still beautiful. And I love every bit of it. I'm going to put this in my bin. Um, you can't have this particular issue. I mean, you can come buy other ones, but like this one, it's mine. So, uh, yeah, definitely go grab this. It is spectacular. Definitely my pick of the week. All right. So what is my pick of the week? If I raved about Berserker that much and then it wasn't, well, like I said, it's all semantics this week. But I chose Undone by Blood. This book, which is from Aftershock and has a lot of really cool people on it. Everybody who worked on this book did something I've enjoyed in the past. 
what put it over the top? And it's really apples and oranges comparing it to the Berserker book that it beats out. That book's super violent. This is a real thinky. Uh, and it has really good writing style to it. What you have is a man in the 30s who is a mailman and he's really obsessed with novels and cowboys and things like that. He ends up buying a cowboy novel at the beginning and you get glimpses of the novel and then you also get this guy who you find out is planning to rob somebody. And you follow both adventures and it, it's it's a wordier book and I actually love that about it. I love the detail. I love the way it's written. It felt like I was reading an old pulp story about a, a cowboy and I also enjoyed that I'm reading this story taking place in the 30s with two shifty mailmen that want to rob a specific building. Um, I love how it ends and the way it sets up for issue two. It is pretty exciting and all I got to say is yeah, don't sleep on this one. I know Berserker's full of violence, but I feel this is going to be full of violence at some point, too. Um, I enjoy the two stories going on at once. Um, really good stuff. So uh, Lonnie Nadler and Zach Thompson, the writing is what puts you over the top for me. Everybody else did a great job as well. But if you enjoy some good writing, this one's for you. All right, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for making it to the end of the video. Thank you for checking us out, for staying loyal, for watching this video and no other video ever. I'm sure that's a lie, um, but thank you. Uh, nothing really to plug. Um, Tom Book Store, 30 North Main Street, Glassford, New Jersey, 30 North Main. Uh, send fan mail to Paul. If you want to write him a letter, tell him how cool he is, you can do that. Uh, I'll make sure he gets it. Um, I may read the mail before I give it to him and sprinkle in a bunch of lies, but that's just because I'm a jerk. I guess I can't do that. That's mail tampering, huh? You're not even listening to me. Yeah, I, I was... Scumbag. Scumbag. So please write all your hate mail to Paul. Write hate mail to me. You can. It's fine. Uh, the comic book store, 30 North Main Street, Glassford, New Jersey. Uh, attention, Paul is a jerk, if you want. Um, that's optional. But, uh, yeah. We'll, so weird. Like, somebody will send you a letter. Getting mail and, and you're looking at him just like, Paul's a jerk. Paul, the comic book, why, the why, comic book why, store. Why here? Attention, Paul. You can do it. It's fine. He'll get it. Please do it. No. Let's start it. Old school no. mail. Don't do it. Email's overrated, right, guys? Somebody do it. Nick, you do it. I'll tell you the other 65 places if you do. Nick's so busy, he won't do it. But maybe. Now we have a cliffhanger for next week. I'm done.